when you get to masters like Buddha and Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, the kind of forgiveness that they're talking about comes from a place of knowledge uh, that they had that I think people didn't quite understand about them. For example, uh, Jesus and Buddha understood something, and what they understood was that the world was not being done to them. Uh, it was being done by them. You know, it was not uh, coming at them, which would put you in a reactionary state okay. of mind. It, it actually is coming from you. Emanating from us. Right. Emanating from the consciousness. Right, and that's the difference between being a cause and being an effect. Most people live their entire lives at the effect of the world, at the effect of the body, and, and it all seems real and outside of them. It's being done to them. Uh, they believe that the universe of time and space was made by God, mm -hmm. which makes them a victim of God, because it makes them a victim of a force that is outside of them, that is doing it to them. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jesus and Buddha, on the other hand, understood that the world was being done by them, and, and because of that, uh, it makes for a different kind of forgiveness. It makes for a kind of forgiveness where you forgive people not because they've really done something to you. You forgive them because they haven't really done anything to you, because you're the one who made them up in the first place. Uh -huh. And so uh, it, it's a totally different way of looking at things. It, it reverses the thinking of the world. Eventually, uh, if you practice enough and get used to it enough and understand that you're the one who's doing it, you know, like A Course in Miracles says, which is uh, the teaching that uh, the teachers in my books eventually get into a lot, right. uh, the Course says that uh, the secret of salvation is but this, that you are doing this to yourself. Uh, you know, and it says this is a course in cause and not effect. And uh, in many ways, it's, it's actually the opposite of looking at the world, the way that we're brought up to look at the world. But uh, if the world is being done by you, then forgiveness is justified. If it's being done to you, forgiveness is not justified, and anger is justified. Mm -hmm. But if it's being done by you, then as the Course teaches, uh, anger is never justified. So it's being done, I, I get the fact that it's being done by us, and it's sort of the, one of the themes of the show about creating reality, you know. And then the other side of that story, and we were involved in a discussion with woman last time you were on the show is saying well what about all those people suffering are they doing mm. that to their reality people starving in Africa Asia are they mm. doing that to their reality is the big question well I think that uh, most people in the new age community would say yes that you're making this uh, happen right now yes. with your thoughts but I don't think that that's true I think that uh, what happened was if you want to go back to what we would call the Big Bang yeah there was uh, a massive denial and projection outward and from that instant on, everything that was going to happen was determined. It's like uh, you couldn't change it afterwards because the force of such an explosion, even though it, it's an illusion, it certainly seems real and feels real. And just as events in a dream do mm -hmm. seem to happen, they do appear to happen. Yeah. Even dreams that you have in bed at night, it does yeah. appear to, that they're happening. And this yeah. does appear to be happening. It does. Uh, I'm not here to say that uh, this is not our experience, that we're in bodies and that we mm -hmm. appear to be separate. I'm just here to say that that's a false experience, that it's not true. And even in, uh, physicists will tell you the same thing. Like Einstein described our experience as kind of like an optical delusion of reality. Mm -hmm. You know, we think that we're here, that we're in bodies, that we're separate, uh, but a, a good physicist will tell you that you're actually a non-spatial being having a spatial experience. In other words, you're actually everywhere, you're all of it, but then it feels like you're confined to this tiny little speck of time and space in, in a separate body. But it's not true. It's an illusion. So there's one mind creating, I mean, ultimately, there's, there's just the, the one great mind creating the illusion of separateness of me and you and our separate experiences. Right. What happened was that that moment of massive denial and projection outward was like, you know, bang, everything that would ever happen happened all at once. It's okay. like, uh, you know, Einstein also said past, present, and future occur simultaneously. Right. What it did was uh, it make a future that's already there, but then we are experiencing it in a linear fashion. So our experience is linear, mm -hmm. but the truth is holographic. You know, it's mm -hmm. all already there, and then, uh, as A Course in Miracles would put it, we are reviewing mentally that which has already gone by. Mm -hmm. So that, that's almost like the definition of a movie. It's like actually watching a movie. Then, with the individual power we have to forgive and love, even though things have already occurred, we can change our inward destiny by acknowledging our own projections and forgiving them. Absolutely. That's why uh, it's very important for people to not stop 
at the teaching that the universe of time and space is just an illusion because uh, that doesn't really make for any progress. Okay. You have to uh, take that which you have made mm -hmm. and look at it completely differently. Now, you won't always have a choice as to what you experience, but you always have a choice as to how you experience it. But you're saying we have a choice, but yet you're saying everything that's already happened has happened. So it seems like a little difference in in you know ideas. Everything happened. We have a choice. It, it, how do you? Oh, you have a choice as to how you choose to look at it. The movie has already been filmed. Uh -huh. You know, it's like you're sitting in a movie theater. Uh -huh. you, the movie's already there. It's already been filmed. But you still have a choice as to how you interpret it. You still mm -hmm. have a choice as to how you look at it. And that's done at the level of the mind, where the movie is just the effect. Right, the movie is the effect, but in a sense, the choice itself also becomes the movie, the real movie of, of reality. The, the, the way we choose to feel about the movie is, is one level of that. The other level is the inner movie of how we choose to feel about what we're seeing, which is the real essence of, of the thing, of, of the nature of reality. Right, that experience of how you know, you look at the movie and, and feel about yourself and experience yourself is determined by the way that you look at the movie and the choices uh, that you make. And not only that, even though uh, the movie itself has already been filmed, there are kind of like uh, alternate endings. There are like different dimensions of time. There are uh, parallel universes uh, going on. Uh, the Holy Spirit, which can see everything and we can't, uh, can make a decision for us uh, to actually watch a different ending, to actually uh, do uh, what you can do at home sometimes when you rent a DVD, mm -hmm. you know, you can watch an alternate ending. So it's not that the, the movie hasn't already been filmed, uh, even that alternate ending has already been filmed and it's already there, but it is possible to switch to a different experience. The only thing is that you have to remember, it's not you that makes that decision, it's well, the Holy Spirit. Well,